Welcome to Data Center Pulse and another episode focused on the chill off. Today I'm here with Phil Hughes and uh, he's with Clustered Systems. Hi. And I'm really happy about this episode because back in February, I think it was episode three, we showed you the Clustered Systems cold plate configuration. And that was to take out all the fans and the servers and basically see how they perform. And today, we actually have the rack behind us that is the result of that first uh, test. And where Phil basically proved to me that he can get this kind of performance out of a box without air. And it was very intriguing. So what I asked was, I need to have a rack that is just like any other rack inside of a data center, but is cooled with liquid. And so this configuration is 32 servers. 36. 36 servers, pardon me, it's even more. 36 servers, and there are no fans inside of the server, except for what we have in the power supplies right now. We couldn't change that. But Phil, do you want to show us exactly how this works? Go ahead, sure. Well, first of all, let's, let's start at the bottom and look at the guts of a, uh, a server. So we open it up very simply by moving, moving the, the lever down so that we can, we can take the server out. Then, so let's pull the server out. And as you can see, it's exactly the same as bringing a server out of a, a normal uh, air-cooled rack or an old-fashioned air-cooled rack, as we now say. Mm -hmm. So what we've got here is a very simple principle. Uh, that what we do, we bring all the heat up to a single plane for all the uh, high uh, heat dissipation units. So we've got the CPUs and VRMs under here, bring the heats up, up to the, the surface. We've got the, the, uh, the DIMMs, the DRAMs, again with a little um, aluminum shell bringing the heat up. North bridges, again bringing the heat up. And then we've got some low dissipation devices. The management card does uh, provide a little bit of heat. So what we've done is just put a small radiator on top of there. Oh, I see. This is the out-of-band the... management itself? Yeah, this is the okay. uh, LOM. Got it. Mom. And then we've put on a, um, a small radiator there because we're getting enough the radiation and convection within the cabinet that just uh, and the lid cools it enough uh, to maintain a, a, a low temperature within the within the cabinet itself. Okay. So then this is the uh, a uh, a thermal interface that we uh, developed in house, which has the two qualities of being very very compliant, that is very soft, but also has a uh, as a high compliance, so it molds itself, as you can see, it molds itself to the shape of the of the uh, of the components. So that means there is no there is no no thermal gaps because even a uh, even a tenth of a, of a thousandth of an inch is like a, an abyss in uh, in thermal engineering. And so you you had uh, I mean before this is much cleaner. It's almost like just a, a gelatin pack stuck on yeah, the side. Yeah. Yeah. Um, very, very maintainable, it looks like. Absolutely. We don't have any liquid coming out on the other side. And then you said it's now on the other side as well, right? And on the other side as well. So this this sits on top of here, picks up the heat. So there. but so basically yep. the heat is dissipating to this one. Then Correct. It's, con it's conducting through into this one, which Correct. is now touching the, the plate, the right? The plate inside, yeah. Okay. So this goes on like that. And, and, and again, to show everybody sees this, the, this is the part that's more important. All the heat is really concentrated within this area. Right. So okay, look, yeah. The power supply is here and the fans are in there, but that's because we just don't have another liquid based or, or uh, we don't have any uh, non air based. We don't have any contact cooled uh, right. power supplies yet. We have them in the lab, but we don't have them here. And as you can see, so this is where these units are. Now I want to talk some numbers really quick. Okay. We're going to go engineer wise. So these these uh, actual fans, each one of these is ten watts. And um, there are 12 of these inside of a cabinet. So my basic math shows that it's 120 watts worth of max load fan speed Yeah, that, that would actually cool this with air. So 120 watts, but you said it's even higher than that. Yeah, because you've got the power supply inefficiencies and board inefficiencies. So you're effectively, we measured it at the wall socket, it's about 150 watts. Okay. So out of, uh, out of about a uh, 400 odd watt uh, server, 150 watts is going to drive those fans when you're using a 35 watt inlet air. And that's with all the losses and everything. So so really, we were talking about 15% back in February because yeah. the, the amount of fans you'd have over time. But yeah. these things are going up at what temperature around the CPUs? Uh, we're running about 60 degrees C core temperature. 60 C core. What about surface? 
that that is. I'm sorry. That's the that's the translated um, AMD measurement. Okay, uh, but that's the same surface. But that's the top temperature the, the you get lid. on the CPU. Uh, okay. No, we can we can go up to seventy five. And what are these spec at? Uh, seventy five. At thirty five C. So no, seventy five C is the wow. maximum temperature that you can get without enclosing. So seventy five C works out to Fahrenheit wise what? Uh, Six. I forgot. <laughs> Let's see. So fifty C is one hundred and twenty two. Yeah. So that's got to be like 140. Something like that, yeah. Wow, so even hotter. Okay, so yeah. back in February, we're talking about 122 degrees is the hottest temperature, but now you're getting all the way up to 60 C in there, you could probably go higher. I don't know. Well, we're not on this, not on the cover, on the, it, on the, on the CPU. Yeah. On the CPU lid. Yeah, we can, at the moment, what we've done is on the CPU lid, we've, uh, we've measured in the lab, we've actually taken this thing up to almost uh, 40 degrees C. Coolant. Okay, so the actual and, right. and we're still we're still maintaining uh, below 70 degrees C um, lid Got temperature. It. So okay. that means that these that we can get some great performance even with uh, water that you can shower in under. <laughs> we're gonna shower data center racks. <laughs> so uh, okay, just to summarize this back up, I think what's really neat is this is performing even more than what we had in your test lab back oh, in February, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. In 2009. And um, the, the concept actually yeah. works. So this is a real cabinet that goes into a data center that basically has these refrigerants supply return links on the top that flows back down and then there's plates in between each of these, right? Yeah, and that, as you showed, when this went back in, you clamp it down, right? Yep. Yeah. It's very, very simple. It is. There's, no tra there's no training of your, uh, of your admins to be done at all. It's there exactly as it was before. You just push the server back in and you just clamp it down, boom, like that, and then also the other side. So that's it, it's done, right. and you're in business. So I needed, when we were talking before, I needed this idiot proof, even I could install it. So I can slot in a rack, right, slot on the server, snap it on the rack, and have it operational. And then to reduce these and get the overall consumption down by a minimum of 15%, and you're claiming that's even higher, yeah, well, if if you're coming in at 20 degrees C air, that's yeah. about 15 percent. Okay, so at, at higher temp air, at 35 degrees C air, it's yeah. uh, a big number, like 150 watts. Right. So they go all the way up. When, but those fans go up. The energy in the fans goes up to the cube of the uh, the RPM. Got it. The cube of the RPM. Got that. <laughs> all right. So the point being that the higher, the hotter temperature it gets, yeah, the more efficiency you're going to get. Right, because you're actually cooling more of the direct heat. Yeah. Right, and so even with high temp liquid coming in, or refrigerant actually coming in to uh, yeah to yeah. cool this. So, okay. Yeah. And and right now within the chill off, so we have uh, three tests left in the chill off before the results are actually starting to be compiled. And you guys just finished last week. Yeah. Yeah. Are you happy with the results? We're pretty happy so far. Yeah, don't share anything yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the back of this rack, if we take a quick look at it, looks just like everything else. So there's power supplies on the left. There's, uh, you know, the cabling is just the same. There's no other bolts to put down on the bottom. It just works the way that any other cabinet does. So the cabinet actually is a Kinnur cabinet and uh, from Germany, right? We had the uh, cool therm and the, uh, the cool loop, I think, was tested at the very beginning of this uh, chill off. And as you can see that there's a refrigerant links up top. Those are going back to a Liebert XDP. So the refrigerant is coming in here, cooling the equipment, and the actual um, return of the heated liquid is coming back out. Right? Is it gas or liquid at that point? A uh, mixture. It's a mixture. Yeah. Okay. So the heat is being rejected in that way. But uh, it works out really simply. Just like you put in an XDV inside of a, a data center, you plug into those connections. Yep. These are the same yeah. types of connections that go into this cabinet. So as you can see, this is pretty interesting. Um, a very different uh, submittal into this actual test. And Phil, thank you very much. I appreciate all your work and uh, your innovation in this area. And we can't wait to see exactly what the results are going to show between all these different cooling solutions. So stay tuned, stay tuned for additional episodes on Data Center Pulse. Three tests to go.